Greetings and welcome to Cornerstone Wealth's year-end 2022 tax planning discussion. My name is Jonathan Brown. I'm a certified financial planner and partner here at Cornerstone Wealth. We'd like to take a few moments today to discuss some helpful year-end tax planning tips for both individuals and business owners. One of Cornerstone's core values is collaboration, so we encourage you to speak with your tax advisor about these topics as Cornerstone believes that collaborating with our, our clients' tax professionals will lead to a greater wealth management experience. We're gonna start with personal deductions and the most impactful of those are the above the line deductions, which will reduce both your adjusted gross income and modified adjusted gross income. Those include things like 401k payroll deferrals, IRA contributions and health savings account contributions. 401k payroll deferral limits for 2022 are $20,500 if under age 50, or $27,000 if you're age 50 or older, and those need to be made before the end of December. IRA and health savings account contributions, on the other hand, can be contributed up until April 15, but deductible for the previous year. Be sure to talk to your tax professional about whether or not an IRA contribution or a health savings account contribution is appropriate for your financial situation. Additional tax planning strategies will depend on whether or not you plan to take the standard deduction or to itemize your deductions. The standard deduction for 2022 has been increased to almost $26,000 for a married couple and is almost $13,000 for someone filing a single tax return. Common itemized deductions include items like charitable contributions, local property tax, state income tax, and sales tax, although those three taxes are limited in how much of a deduction you get and home mortgage interest. If you plan to make a charitable contribution, we encourage you to consider a donor advised fund. This is a really useful tax planning vehicle that allows the, the gift of those funds to go to a fund that allows a current year tax deduction, whereas the ultimate disbursement of those funds to those charities involved can happen in subsequent years. You can also give appreciated stock or other investments to a donor advised fund or directly to a charity. The benefit of doing that is you do not have to sell that investment and realize a capital gain as a result of that sale, and that you can typically get full market value deduction on what is being given. Then lastly, for charitable contributions, anybody who is over the age 70 and a half and has money in a pre-tax IRA should consider a qualified charitable distribution from their IRA. This strategy allows the IRA owner to give money directly from their IRA to a church or charity in a tax-free gift. And if that person is over the age 72, it also counts towards their annual required minimum distribution. Next, we're gonna talk briefly about investments and tax implications. And as we all know, 2022 has been a very challenging year for both the equity and fixed income markets. This also presents an opportunity though for tax loss harvesting. And this strategy can be used to realize losses in your portfolio that will offset gains realized earlier in the year and up to $3,000 of ordinary income. These losses can also be carried forward indefinitely to offset future year capital gains. But when working with the tax loss harvesting strategy, be mindful of wash sale and the substantially identical rules. Part of the tax code also includes the net investment income tax, which is an additional 3.9% surtax charged on investment income for folks that have adjusted gross income north of $250,000 for a married couple or $200,000 for a single filer. Lastly, we'll touch briefly on tax implications for business owners. Most small businesses are organized as an S corporation for their tax filing status. We encourage any S corporation business owners to talk to their tax professionals about the amount of wage income themselves and other owner operators of their business are being paid relative the ex to the expected profit of the business. This has been an area of added scrutiny by the IRS for the last several years, and your tax professional will provide some appropriate guidance on how to balance those two things. The tax code still contains the qualified business income deduction that most businesses will be eligible for. One new provision to the tax code is that certain states allows owners in a partnership or an S corporation to pay state income tax from the entity directly to the state. Two benefits of doing this will, are including that the um, 
the income flowing from the business to the personals to the personal return would be less because of that expense. And then also it's beneficial if the owner of that business might be capped by that $10,000 salt limit that we mentioned above for the state and local tax uh, cap. Lastly, for business owners, really good tax deductions include your retirement plan. So be sure that you max out your 401k payroll deferrals before the end of December, <clears throat> and that you can also make profit sharing contributions up until March 15 of next year that are deductible for the 2022 tax year. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Please do not hesitate to contact Cornerstone to speak to one of our wealth advisors about your financial plan. Be sure to subscribe to Cornerstone's YouTube channel so that you can see future episodes covering an array of wealth management, financial market, and economic outlook topics. Wishing you and your family a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you.